they're homogeneous because all of the terms are all to the power to the same power. There's only one of them, which is to, to, to the power of one. Whereas over in this particular situation here, once again, hey, okay, once again, what we have is we have a recurrence, okay? And uh, the recurrence is also linear, okay? Because each term uh, with respect to the, let's say, the, with respect to a position in the sequence, okay? Uh, is listed on its own to the power of one, okay? Uh, so this is also linear, it's also of degree one because the nth term is defined in terms of the previous term, but it's not homogeneous because we have a B out here, okay? For it to be homogeneous, every single term needs to be to the same power, where this is to the power of one, where this is effectively B to the power of a n minus one to the zero. Well, if you, if you want to consider it that way. So this is a heterogeneous system here. Okay? But the key thing about the method of differences is this, is that, the method of differences works okay, when the coefficient when the coefficient okay, is equal is equal to one. When the coefficient is not equal to one, this technique isn't going to work. And we'll have a look at that in a few moments. We'll give you an example of where this actually breaks down. Okay? But effectively, what we have is we have a way to solve certain types of recurrence relations. Let's have a look at case three. So case three, a little bit more complicated. Case three. Well, case three is defined, we're defining case three to be a n is equal to a n minus one plus n, and we'll maybe have a zero is equal to a constant a. So what we want to do is we want to find a closed form solution to a recurrence that looks something like this. Now, in this situation here, okay, in this situation here, we have that the recurrence, the recurrence a n equals a n minus one plus n, uh, is is determined by not just the previous term, but the nth term is determined by the previous term plus the index that we're looking for, if that makes sense. So this is actually a variable here that's dependent on the term that we're looking for. So it's not a constant. It actually varies through this particular iteration. Well, let's have a look at it again. Let's find out what the differences would look like. So we'd have a n minus a n minus one must be equal to, must be equal to n. And now let's iterate through the differences. So we have a one minus a zero must be equal to n. Well, n is one in this case, so it must be equal to one. We have a two minus a one must be equal to n. Well, n is two. You can see the way this is changing, it's varying. We have a three minus a two must be equal to three. And we can go down to the nth minus one term. We have a n minus one minus its previous one, a n minus two must be equal to n. Well, in this case, the index is n minus one, so it must be equal to n minus one. And then the nth difference, a n minus a n minus one, is simply equal to is simply equal to n. So let's try the technique again. Let's try to add up these. Let's add up the left-hand side and add up the right-hand side. Because if each one of these things are equal, the summation of the left then must equal the summation of the right. And once again, you can see that the a1 cancels with the minus a1, the a2 cancels with the minus a2, the a3 will cancel with the, the following term. The minus a n minus 2 will cancel with the previous one. The a n minus 1 will cancel with the a n minus 1. Effectively, what we're left with on the left-hand side is an a n minus an a0 must be equal to... Now, we have to sum all of these values up. So it's one plus two plus three plus dot, 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 plus n minus one plus n, okay? And this is the sum of the natural numbers, the sum of the first n natural numbers. Now, this isn't any good for us now at this particular stage. We'd, if we knew what the sum of the first n natural numbers were, well, then we could actually solve this for a n, okay? So let's consider that. So let's consider how can we get a summation for the first n natural numbers, okay? So let's just consider that particular problem and see can we find a solution to that, okay? So let's actually just do some natural numbers out here. So we're considering, considering the summation, the summation, okay, okay of the first, of the first n natural numbers natural numbers. Okay, well, let's just list them down. Okay, So let's say we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 
let's say plus all the way through, let's say plus, let's say n minus two plus n minus one plus n. So here's the sum of the, so here's the summation of the first n natural numbers. And this actual closed form is, this closed form summation that we're going to end up with is, is attributed to Gauss. Uh, and hopefully what we can see is that, hmm, if we add the first number with the last number, okay, so if we add these two together, well, what do we end up with? We end up with one plus n gives us an n plus one. If we add the second number with the second to last number, well, what do we end up with? We end up with an n minus one plus a two 